Whether you're buying groceries at the supermarket, gas at the gas station, or even a flight for your next vacation, there just aren't that many products out there that take a percentage of the purchase price and put it back in your pocket. In fact, for the right types of people, cashback credit cards are actually better than travel credit cards. So let's talk about the reasons why. First of all, many of these have no annual fee. And this is your formal invitation to sit back, put on your seatbelt, and get ready for quite an unbelievable journey. Watch this. With Chase, we have the Freedom Unlimited, Freedom Flats, Amazon Prime Visa, Inc. Business Unlimited, and Inc. Business Cash. American Express brings us the Cash Magnet Card, Blue Cash Every Day, Blue Business Cash, Amazon Business Prime, and Lowe's Business Rewards Card. With Capital One, we see the Saver One Card, Quicksilver One, Regular Quicksilver, and the Spark 1.5% Cash Select. Wells Fargo offers us the Autograph, Attune, and Signify Business Cash. Citibank has the Custom Cash, Double Cash, and Rewards Plus. With US Bank, you can get the Cash Plus, Altitude Go, and the Triple Cash Rewards. Discover has their Discover It Cashback and Discover It Chrome Gas and Restaurant Cards. And Bank of America issues the Customized Cash Rewards and Unlimited Cash Rewards Cards. And this list that you see here on the screen is by no means comprehensive. There are still more card products and more card issuers too. And seeing them all on the screen here together, that is eight different banks issuing a total of 27 cashback credit cards all of which have $0 annual fees. Reason number two why cashback credit cards rock is that so many of them offer strong rewards long term. Let's check out a few examples. With the Chase Freedom Flats, you earn 5% cashback in quarterly bonus categories that change every three months. A lot of these are very useful, like gas stations, grocery stores, and select online merchants every quarter, which is great. Beyond that, you also earn 5% on travel, but through the Chase Travel Portal, 3% on dining at restaurants, 3% at drug stores, and 1% on all of your other purchases. There's also a special partner benefit with Lyft, giving you 5% back on your rides booked through Lyft through March 31st of 2025. The Blue Cash Everyday card from American Express also has some great 3% categories that are really useful for your day-to-day -day life. You'll earn that 3% back on groceries at U.S. supermarkets, also U.S. online retail purchases, and U.S. gas stations each of which are individually capped at $6,000 per year. If you spend more than that in any one category, it goes down to 1% for the rest of that year. Then anything else outside of those main three categories will also earn 1% back. Looking to the Saver One Rewards card from Capital One, this one issues 5% back on hotels and rental cars, but through Capital One Travel, 3% back on dining, entertainment, popular streaming services and at grocery stores, then 1% back on everything else. But there are also a few other things as you scroll down on the page. You get 10% back on Uber and Uber Eats. That is valid through November 14th, 2024, unless they extend or end it early. Also, Capital One Entertainment for 8% back when you book your concert tickets, event tickets, and more through their platform. Up next, we have a great card that a lot of people can use as their one and done type of card. The Wells Fargo Autograph also earns triple points equal to 3% back on restaurants, travel, gas, transit, popular streaming services, and on phone plans. Then 1x on other purchases. And to round off our examples here, we have the City Custom Cash Card. This one earns 5% cash back on your top eligible spend category each billing cycle, up to $500 per cycle. To see which categories fall under the eligible list, you can see here in the fine print, it includes things like restaurants, gas stations, grocery stores, select travel, select transit, and the list goes on from there, all of which are very useful. The card then earns 1% cash back on all of your other purchases, but there's also a special travel offer where you get an additional 4% on top of the base, so this is also a total of 5% back on hotels, car rentals, and attractions when you book those through the city travel portal, and this lasts through June 30th of 2025. 
That is a whole lot of 3%, 5%, 8%, and even 10% on so many useful day-to-day -day categories. Even the people who are on team travel will have a little bit of a challenge made out for them to get that type of return on their day-to-day -day purchases. All right, so you're already earning cash back with your credit card, but how would you like to earn even more cash rewards on top of what your card gives you? That's where today's video sponsor comes in, Top Cashback. Top Cashback is an online shopping portal that awards you with cash back every time you shop with thousands of online retailers. In fact, you're probably already familiar with a lot of them, like the Home Depot, Walgreens, Macy's, Marriott Bonvoy, and more. There are actually over 7,000 options to choose from. The best part is that Top Cashback is 100% free, super easy to use, and often gives you higher cashback rates than a lot of other portals out there. Let me show you how it works. First, create your free account, which only takes a few seconds. Second, find a store you want to shop at. You can simply browse the site, search by category, or type in the name of a store directly. Then click on the store to be taken to the offer page. Be sure to read the terms so you know which items are eligible to earn cash back and also confirm the percentage of cash back that you're going to be earning right now, since both of these can change throughout the year. And of course, also see if any coupon codes are available, that way you can save even more. Next, click on the red Get Cash Back button to be sent directly to the retailer's website. Once you find what you want, go through the regular checkout process to complete your order. Top Cashback will automatically track your order and award you with the bonus cashback once the transaction fully clears. So if you'd like to supercharge your cashback and make online shopping even more rewarding, then click the link down below in the description to create your free account today. To sweeten the deal even further, you'll also get a bonus $10 of cashback once you spend your first $25. It doesn't get much better than that. Now back to the rest of the video. The third reason to favor cashback credit cards is that these cards are usually easy to understand. Let's demonstrate this with a more complicated type of cashback card, the Capital One Saver One, and I say that because it has a lot going for it. But if you just kind of read one section to the next, it's pretty straightforward. First of all, you get a bonus up front if you're eligible with a spend requirement. That's to earn 200 bucks, and you get that after you spend 500 in the first three months of account opening. You can also avoid interest charges on your purchases and balance transfers thanks to a 0% intro APR for the first 15 months, after which you'll have a variable APR. Cool. Also, no annual fee that you have to worry about. Also, no foreign transaction fees, so when you uh, make purchases outside of the U.S., that's a huge perk right there. And then the rewards categories kind of take over from there. So as you spend on the card in things like Capital One's Travel Portal, plus dining, entertainment, streaming, groceries, you're getting a little percent back on these normal categories that most people spend on anyway. Then logging into your Capital One dashboard, you can see your rewards front and center right there. When you tap on your Saver One card, it just says $15.73 in my case of rewards cash available. I can then click on the View Rewards button and it brings me to several different ways to redeem my cash back. Whether it's directly for cash back, redeeming for experiences, booking a trip, redeeming through PayPal, Amazon, buying gift cards, covering purchases, or even moving them to another card. So even though this card has a pretty comprehensive reward structure plus a partner benefit that you have to think about a little bit, overall there's nothing really hidden in fine print that would surprise anybody. No crazy credits that you have to remember to use on a quarterly or annual basis. It pretty much just comes down to swipe for your normal purchases and earn on those purchases. Pretty low maintenance. Let's move on to reason number four. The rewards are usually easy to understand. I say usually because some of these cashback cards actually earn points while others earn straight cash back. So to help you kind of orient your mind around the differences here and to understand the points part of the equation, here's a nice little walkthrough that we'll go through together right now. We'll start with a well-known and super popular card, the Chase Freedom Flets. This one actually earns points called Ultimate Rewards Points and the value of one point is one cent or one penny. And the great thing about this is that it makes the math super easy. Just add a decimal point and move it from right to left two spots. So in our example, if you had 12,592 points, just move the decimal over a couple spots and you have $125.92. And that's a technique that you can actually commit to memory because it's always going to be that way when points are worth one cent, either for cash back or some other type of redemption. 
Let's take a look now at the American Express Blue Cash Everyday card. This one earns straight cash back, or as Amex calls it, reward dollars. In this case, one reward dollar equals one dollar. So if you see $72.59 of your cash back, that's just $72.59. The same thing holds true here for the Capital One Saver One card. It also earns regular cash back, or as Capital One calls it, rewards cash, where $1 equals $1. So $315.67 is $315.67. Lastly, with the Wells Fargo Autograph, this one also earns points, called reward points. One point again here is worth one cent. So similar to what we did with Chase, just move the decimal over a couple spaces. 7,250 points equals $72.50. But there are a couple exceptions. In fact, here are eight programs right now on the screen. I'm gonna highlight a couple of them now in red. Specifically, the American Express Membership Rewards Program and the Capital One Venture Miles Program. So any cards that earn these types of points will have a different value, a lower value for cashback redemptions. Amex Membership Rewards points have a value of 0.6 cents per point, and Capital One Venture Miles have a value of 0.5 cents per point. All of the other ones that you see on the screen have a consistent value of 1 point equals 1 cent. So it's spanning all this way out for you with the math included for those of you who might be new to this type of thinking. Now we have all eight programs with the multiplying done there on the far right side to show you how to calculate the value of points. This is the very reason why I tell people who earn Amex points to use those points for travel where you can get much better value. Same with Capital One Miles use those for travel. If, however, you prefer cashback rewards and you want a card from Amex or Capital One, then choose card products that actually earn straight cash back, not points or miles. Reason number five is sure to make a lot of people who value simplicity very happy. With cashback cards, you don't have to worry about maximizing, at least very rarely. To illustrate what I mean here, what I'm talking about with maximization is typically using points for travel and using transfer partners where you move your points out to other airline or hotel programs that are partnered with your bank program. So we've already mentioned the Chase Freedom Flex card as an example in this video of a card that earns cash back in the form of ultimate rewards points. But if you were to get the Chase Sapphire Preferred credit card, for example, that one also earns Chase ultimate rewards points, but it has transfer partners, unlocking way more ways to use your points other than just cash back. And once you get into the transfer partner game, the value of your points becomes widely variable. Check this out. Let's say we had 25,000 ultimate rewards points. We then moved them over to the World of Hyatt program, becoming 25,000 World of Hyatt points. And then let's say we use those points to cover a hotel that had a cash value and cost, let's say, $572. Well, the value per point in that case would be the cash rate, 572, divided by the number of points, 25,000, taking that result, multiplying it by 100, and we get 2.23 cents per point. A lot better than just one cent per point with typical cashback credit cards. As a second example, let's say we had 12,383 ultimate rewards points transferred over to Southwest, becoming 12,383 rapid rewards points. We then use those to cover a flight costing $185, giving us a value of 1.4 cents per point a little bit better than cashback credit cards. And for our last example, let's say we had 100,000 ultimate rewards points. We moved those and converted them into the Air Canada program to become Aeroplan Miles. We then paid for a flight on their partner, Lufthansa. Let's say it was a business or first class flight over $4,512, and that would give us 4.5 cents per point. That's four and a half times more value than cashback would have given you. And if you had redeemed those same 100,000 points for cashback, which you could have done, that would only give you $1,000 of value. So that last example is literally four and a half times better than cashback.
But all of that requires a lot of research and thought behind building an itinerary that allows you to do that, understanding different transit partner values in a variable type of way, and also airline alliance partnerships. It gets messy and requires time and effort, but for those willing to play the game and learn the ins and outs and loopholes of it all, it can be extremely rewarding. However, for all my people who are not really into travel, or even if you are, perhaps you still value simplicity way more than anything else, cashback cards are gonna be your best bet for those types of situations. And our sixth and final reason, cashback credit cards work really easily together, even across issuers. And this is a huge leg up over travel credit cards, but what do I actually mean by this? Broadly speaking here, cashback is cashback. It doesn't matter if you earn it from US Bank, Bank of America, or Chase, it's just cash. So unlike with travel rewards, let's say you had Amex points and Chase points, you can't just put them into the same account and combine them all. You could indirectly do so if you transfer them to a common transfer partner, but any other way, you're gonna have separate account balances with each bank-based program. So if you're just earning cash back, well, you can have one-time statement credits when you redeem it all to lower your card balance, you can also do frequent statement credits to offset individual purchases whenever you want to. You can deposit to a checking account. It might even be a common checking account as some banks allow you to transfer out to a checking account not with the same bank. Some do require the same checking account with the same bank though. The rules do vary, but just see what options you have available to you. Regardless, if you have to redeem the separate accounts, you can eventually transfer it all together into one common account. That's actually one of the things I love about Citi's credit card program. When I have some points I wanna redeem, I can actually choose to go and redeem that into cash back with a non Citibank bank account. And then if I have cards with that other account, I can redeem those to the same check-in account. So all my cash back is going to a single check-in account. Really cool when it works out that way. You can also purchase gift cards when available to other merchants. You can invest into your retirement account and more. If you wanna learn more about any of the cards mentioned in this or in other videos, check out my site, markscreditcards.com offers to view a bunch of them organized by category. That way you can easily find the ones that you like the best. And if you wanna see my credit card strategy that works well for both cashback and for travel, check out this video next to see how it all works together. And hey, you might even wanna join me. I'll see you there.